Hello and welcome to my kitchen this evening. Uh, this video is a honest confession uh, that I, um, yeah, that I'm human. <laughs> um, in the past two weeks, well, less than that, in the past ten days, now that uh, most of the faculty are trickling back to work, uh, having realized that there's stuff to do in order to go online and to be online and be ready when the semester starts in a week. <laughs> and uh, two of them who have come, I have seen, and I was totally shocked by the transformation between the last time I saw them in March and this past week. Both of them lost 60 pounds. And I, I don't get it. It's one of those things where you look at your life and you go, but wait a minute, I'm trying to do the right things and why are the blessings not coming into my life? And why do they, all they have to do, I mean, one of them, all he did was, he said, I stopped drinking soda and I started walking every morning and every evening. And I'm like, I walk 15 miles a day. <laughs> and I didn't have not lost 60 pounds. In fact, I probably gained weight since March. And it was rough. And so here's a video about my reaction and my thought process on that and what it led me to appreciate about my life, even though I don't have the aesthetic to which I may aspire. First off, I have recognized, I recognized the need to repent of envy. I looked at both of those two dudes and thought, man, I am so jealous, except that I know I'm not. I'm only jealous of the way they look. Um, I know an, a little bit about both of their personal lives, not a whole lot, but I know enough about their personal lives to know that I don't want to switch places with either one of them. Uh, and also, I came to a point as I was wrestling with this and frustrated and, you know, shaking my fist at the heavens and saying, go bless someone else with trials for a while, you know, give them trials and give me, you know, 60 pound weight loss. Actually, that might be unhealthy for me if I lost 60 pounds. Um, that I could rejoice in their progress. And so by the time a week had passed since the first one, when I ran into this one individual, I was like, I, I just can't get over it. And, and congratulations, dude. Because I really do rejoice. Because his losing weight doesn't hurt me at all. Except in my mind. It didn't take anything from me. He's already married, so it's not like he's competing for dates, assuming that I could get one, or that I wanted to get one, or that we could go anywhere and do anything, right? <laughs> And, uh, but it doesn't take anything away from me. Actually, they're both married. So what did I lose from that? It's not like there are financial incentives for, oh, you're the, they're the lightest member of the department or you're the one who lost the most weight. Here's, let's shower you with cash. <laughs> no, I didn't lose anything. So there's absolutely no reason for me to be upset about them at all. And every reason for me to celebrate it and encourage them and continue to support them because these are good decisions. Because every person in our society who becomes healthier is a good thing. It means they live longer, it means they live better, it means they don't draw on our healthcare system, and all they did was stop eating certain foods that we shouldn't be eating anyway. So who did they hurt? Nobody. It actually made the, all of our society better. And I know it's only two people, but you know, if it saves just one starfish, if you don't know that story, go look it up. So it made me consider my life, because I know that each of these guys is a package deal. And they have other health issues, other behavioral issues, other familial issues. And there's no way in Hoboken or Halifax that I want to trade places with either of them just to have their physique. Because I know that I would have to take all the other things and I don't want those. Training blessings with someone isn't like this smorgasbord buffet where you walk down the line and go, oh, I only want the things I want. It's more like dinner at your grandma's house where your grandma's like, eat all your food and you can leave the table, you know, and you got to eat everything. And that's why my brothers and I would go out and tra trample the rhubarb in the backyard before dinner because we hated it. And we knew that if we didn't step on it, she was going to cook it and serve it. <laughs> so I have, to my parents at least, frequently mentioned that I am grateful for the genetics that I have. And I mentioned this when I pray to God too. Um, I don't have very great looking genetics, but all my grandparents lived to be around 89 years old. And except for one who uh, may have had early stage dementia when he died, they were all pretty active and fit. You know, or they, were, they were mobile, agile, tactile, and they had all their faculties. 
up until the day they died. And they didn't have a ton of health problems. They lived you know, modest, comfortable lives. And if, and if that's what I'm in store for and all I've got to trade for that is that I don't look good without a shirt, that's a good deal. It's a good trade. And I think about, you know, if, if I were to pick, if you were allowed to pick your parents and before you came to earth and, and you were asked, you know, who, which ones would you pick? I'm certain that I chose mine because those things don't matter there. In heaven, you know, when everyone's an angel and no, there's no money, there's no, there's no, oh, superstar, no celebrity. I mean, there's, there's only one superstar, that's Jesus. No celebrity status. No one is particularly smarter. No one is particularly better looking. We're all children of God. And we're all brilliant, okay? And when we return to God, those of us who make it back to his presence will all be more or less equally brilliant, just like we can't distinguish when we look up in the sky at night, most of the stars, some of them look brighter because they're closer. <laughs> but um, And there are differences between stars, but from our perspective, we can't tell the difference. And I don't think we'll be able to tell the difference between stars uh, in heaven. So money, wealth, and aesthetic appeal are things that have no value there. Now, and you wouldn't have known before you were born that those are things that are highly valued here because there's no money in heaven and there's no, oh my gosh, you're ugly because we, we didn't have Instagram and Facebook and stuff. So we didn't have the Miss America pageant. I'm trying to think of other things, you know, that we didn't have to, that have complicated the comparison. We didn't have pride. C.S. Lewis wrote in Mere Christianity, it is the comparison that makes us proud, the pleasure of appearing to be the best. And so these are things that make a person appear to be better. And because there was more or less an equality and there will be more or less an equality in heaven, those things don't really have any lasting value. They're enormous here, but they have no significance there at all. So what does matter here? What really matters here is love. We all deserve love. We all seek for love because we know even though we may suck, our lives may suck. Love, being loved, makes it suck less, makes it better. All that really matters is love. Because there is no heartbreak anywhere like losing love. I know I talk about my dog all the time. He was the love of my life. And when he died, a part of me died too. And uh, two weeks ago, we buried my parents' last dog. And uh, I loved her too. This is mine. I'm trying to get so you can see it. It's not a great picture, but not a great way to show it. And then uh, they, were, they were love in my life. And uh, they were here. No matter what life brought, they made life suck a little bit less. Here's a fairly good one of her. Ugh. I don't know if you can see it, but um, I loved them. And they died. I cannot describe the heartbreak in words. Maybe you can hear it in my voice and see it in my face. And I've had other heartbreaks. I don't miss my ex-wife, but getting a divorce was heartbreaking and heart-wrenching. And I have had feelings for other people since then who have just left. And in 2013, a friend of mine was murdered and I had a, another friend die in surgery last week. And as I watch the grandparents die, my relationships die, my dogs die, and my friends die, I question, what do I really have? Because I could have all the money in the world and I could, you know, have six pack or eight pack abs, but I still wouldn't have those friends. I still would have had those heartbreaks. I still would have considered those the best parts of my life. Because I know it may sound really silly to you if you've never had a dog or never loved a dog like I have, but our last couple of years were the best years of my life. And all I did was hang out here in this chair right over here in the kitchen here while he futzed around and went in and out the dog door right there and in the backyard behind me. 
And we just hung out and had dinner together and we just enjoyed being, to, being together. They reciprocated my love. And I realized that one of the things that I love them the most for is that they loved me and they appreciated my love in return. And so this, this has been a good exercise for me. It revealed to me that I have some envy, jealousy issues. It also revealed to me that I was able to overcome them and that I was aware of, grateful for, and able to appropriately value in my life the things that I do have. I have good parents. They're not going to be, you know, in the, in the poster. They're not going to win any awards in the, in the beauty show. But they're good people. And they were... The, I, I love the way I grew up, where I grew up, and the things we experienced as I was growing up. Not everything, of course, but... And the best thing that they gave me wasn't their genetics, it was their love. My dog was sort of ugly. <laughs> he was a Merle Beagle, so he always looked gray, which meant he always looked dirty. <laughs> so he was always looked like a, a dirty dog. Um, but he loved me, and I will always be grateful for that. So you may not have everything that you, that you like, but one of the things that brings us happiness in life is recognizing and being grateful for the things that we do have and recognizing what's truly valuable in our life. And this may be, not be the things that you value, but these are the things that I value. Um, the only thing I would change about this house now is I wish I had... Uh, remodeled it while he was here to share it with him. Of course, then I would have just had to remodel it after he died. <laughs> um, he made this home. And uh, it's good to have family that loves you and appreciates your love. It's good to have a dog that loves you and appreciates your love. It's good to have friends who love you and appreciate your love because when all is said and done, everyone's going to get old and f older and fatter and in the end, death comes for everyone, regardless of how rich you are. But you never really die as long as those who love you remember you. So if you could see my house, you would see the only pictures I've rehung are family, dogs, and right up here I have this photo of a lighthouse being struck by a wave to remind me to stand firm in adversity right above the kitchen table, by Jean Yichelde. Because what do people hang up? Things that are valuable to them. Those are the things that are the most valuable to me. What's valuable to you? What would you change about your life if you could? Why haven't you changed it? What are you going to do to change the things that you can? Because yes, I can work on the 60 pounds, and I have decided on a course of action to try and rectify that. No, it doesn't mean walking more, and it doesn't mean quitting drinking soda, because I don't have any of that anyway. But uh, I'm going to try something different and see if that helps. And, uh, you know, improve when you can, hold your ground when you get there. And try and be a little bit better of a person tomorrow than you were today. Anyway, food for thought. Just a reminder, my personal perspective, my blog, my channel, my life, my thoughts. Godspeed and take care of yourselves and each other.